Imagine you have a giant box, like big enough to hold an infinite number of cookies. Now, when we say infinite, we mean there's no end to the number of cookies in that box. It just keeps going and going. Well, count me in. Now, in the real world, it's pretty hard to find truly infinite things. But mathematicians have figured out a way to understand and talk about infinity. Just like we have numbers like 5 or 5 million, mathematicians also consider infinity as a number. But why is that? How can it be a number if it's something that never ends? Well, it's because mathematicians think of infinity as the size of a special kind of set, basically a group of things. So we can imagine a set of counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. You can keep counting forever, right? Well, that set of counting numbers is actually an infinite set because it goes on and on without ever stopping. Mathematicians call this a countably infinite set. And since mathematicians talk about infinity as a number, they can do some really strange stuff with it. They can add infinities together and even multiply infinities. Now, you might be thinking, how can you add or multiply infinities? That's a great question. It's like trying to imagine what happens when you combine an endless supply of cookies with an infinite number of ice cream cones. I'm up for that. Now, to understand how it works, let's take a look at an interesting thought experiment. Imagine there's a special hotel called the Hilbert Hotel. It has an infinite number of rooms, and they're numbered 1, 2, 3, and so on forever. And you're the manager of the place. At first, it might seem like you can accommodate absolutely anyone who shows up because you have an infinite number of rooms. But hold on, there's a twist. A way to go beyond the infinity of rooms at the Hilbert Hotel. Let's say each room can only hold one person and all the rooms are already occupied. Now imagine suddenly a new person arrives and they want a room. Uh oh, what should you do? Every single room is filled with an infinite number of people. Well, here's where some really cool math tricks come into play. Instead of turning the new person away like a boring manager would, you have a clever idea. You tell all the guests in the hotel to move down to the next room. The person in room 1 moves to room 2, the one in room 2 moves to room 3, and so on, creating a chain reaction down the line. And now you have an empty room. So you happily put the new guest in room 1. Easy, right? Well, let's say a big bus arrives with 100 people who need rooms. No worries. You know exactly what to do. You just ask all the guests to move down 100 rooms, and then you can accommodate all the new guests in the now empty rooms. But let's make it even more challenging. Imagine an infinitely long bus that's carrying an infinite number of people. How do you deal with this? Well, don't worry, there's a clever plan. You tell each of the old guests to move to a room that has double their current room number. So the person in room 1 moves to room 2, the one in room 2 moves to room 4, the person in room 3 moves to room 6, and so on. Now all the existing guests occupy the even-numbered rooms, and all the odd-number rooms are available. And for the moment, we'll ignore all the guest complaints about having to swap rooms. Now, of course, there's an infinite number of odd numbers, so you can easily give each person on the infinite bus a unique odd number room. Isn't it fascinating how infinity allows for such creative solutions? The possibilities seem endless, just like the concept of infinity itself. For example, did you know that you can not only add and subtract infinities, but also compare them with each other. To understand this, we're going to think about infinity as a cardinality, which is a fancy way of saying it's just like the size of a set. In other words, a group of things. Imagine we have some different sets, like natural numbers, 1, 2, 3, and so on, integers, positive and negative whole numbers, and even rational numbers, like fractions. Now, the big question is, do all these infinite sets have the same size of infinity? Or are some infinities bigger than others? To figure this out, we use a cool concept called one-to-one correspondence. For example, we start by exploring the natural numbers and the integers. At first, it might seem like there are more integers because they include both positive and negative numbers. But surprise! We can show that there's a one-to-one correspondence between them. 
It means that each integer gets a natural number partner, and these two sets perfectly match up. Next, we check the rational numbers, like fractions. They seem way bigger, right? But we use a clever geometric pattern to count them, and guess what? We find another one-to-one -one correspondence. So we've proven that the size of the infinity of rational numbers is the same as the natural numbers and integers. Now comes a real challenge, the real numbers. All the points are on a number line. These seem even bigger than the rational numbers, and you might think we can just count them like before. But in reality, it's impossible to count all real numbers in this way. We can't match them up with the natural numbers, so they have a bigger size of infinity. This discovery opened up a whole new world of counterintuitive properties of infinity. We realize that not all infinities are the same size. Some infinite sets are equal in size, while others are larger. Pretty crazy, huh? Practically speaking, this knowledge has implications for computer science too. Alan Turing, a computer science pioneer, wondered if we could compute every real number accurately using a computer. Turns out, most real numbers are uncomputable, meaning we can't calculate their exact values in a finite amount of time. Incredible, isn't it? And there are many other interesting properties of infinity out there. Hey, I could go on and on. <laughs> Ever heard of the axiom of choice? It's a bit tricky to grasp, but it helps us do math in some really interesting ways. Imagine you're at a magical store with an infinite number of shelves, and on each shelf, there are many different items, an endless collection of toys, books, and so on. Now, you have to choose one item from each shelf, but there's a catch. You can't see all the shelves at once, and you can't go to every shelf separately. The axiom of choice is like having a superpower that lets you magically pick one item from each shelf, even without looking at all the shelves at once. Without the axiom of choice, it could be really tricky or even impossible to perform many incredible mathematical tricks. But the most important, the most tricky question is, do infinities even exist? This is a strange question to ask after we've been talking about it for so long. But if you think about it, how often do we encounter infinities in the real world? Scientists aren't even sure that our universe itself is infinite, let alone the objects inside. So, essentially, the existence of infinity itself is a big debate among mathematicians. Many scientists view this idea as a cool construct like poetry, beautiful and abstract. All because infinity can lead to some awesome paradoxes, like the infinite monkey theorem. This theorem states that an infinite number of monkeys hitting random keys on an infinite set of typewriter keyboards for an infinite amount of time will eventually type all the works of Shakespeare, even Hamlet. In fact, the monkeys would surely type every possible text an infinite number of times. It's a quirky way of saying that with infinity, anything is possible. Mathematics has grown so much over time, from barely knowing about infinity to now having amazing technology and knowledge. Who knows what math will look like in the future, a hundred or even a thousand years from now. It's always fascinating to learn more, so stay curious and keep exploring.